Guppy. I don't know about some bitch daddy and right? Guppy. Is, it, is he a Marlin though? He does look like a Guppy. He's I mean, if you, if you really want to, if you really want to call him out, like you can call him a minnow. What's a minnow? A Very minnow. Just call me? No, a minnow. But I, f I feel like a guppy is what like the golden retriever. A minnow, of they're fish. typically used as feeder fish. Whoa. So, that's I'm a mean. feeder? Something Whoa, that's kind of messed that's up, right. bro. Why would you? <laughs> hey. Or the most abundant also, fish want... in the ocean, uh, the lantern fish, I believe they're called. But guppies are invasive species, right? So are you I saying cuss is invasive? You call him invasive as well? <laughs> so oh, no, that's the lion. Is invasive. Right <laughs> I mean, technically, yeah, lionfish what? are invasive to the Australian waters that are destroying yep. the Great Barrier Reef. Whoa, uh, now you're ruining uh, the, the, the nice things that we have as well. Jack, I'm honestly, not ruining I, I it. The lionfish are. I, I'm not, uh, yeah, I well, that well, that I'm, I'm, I'm holding you personally good. accountable. Okay, as good. a fish fanatic, I'm holding you accountable. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sure. Also, I want to call out the Sorry. desk. First of all, Danny, bro, what's up with the penguins, okay? <laughs> penguins are cute, don't want to eat a penguin. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not, you know, I'm just curious. I'm the only one who's innocent here, all right? They're fluffy, they're cute, but Someone they're very fluffy. They might have they're a lot of meat. Yeah. I don't want to eat them. I want to give them a nice hug. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. No, Danny, yeah, there's no excuses, okay? So keep him accountable and stop recording me, okay? But we, we do have an interesting match uh, going on here with the Houston Outlaws taking on the Vegas Eternal because, you know, as the predictions have shown, this should be a one-sided affair. Houston Outlaws are expected to be the favorites. They've been dominant this season, only really falling to the Atlanta rain. While the Vegas Eternal still hunting for their first win, everyone wants to see that smile from Rack Attack get a little bit wider. So like an uh, arowana versus a minnow then? Is that what you're saying? Uh, uh wait, sure, why not? Yeah? Okay, invasive species versus the feeders. Is that what, is no, that what you're saying? No, arowanas aren't invasive. They're just like, okay. they're like trophy fish, I guess. They're, they're like very, they're very beautiful fish. Very beautiful. Okay. They're very cool. And you know, you feed minnows to them. So that's what I was saying. I was trying to make a good analogy for this series, Scott, that wasn't something to do with eating penguins. Cause I don't think the chat okay, likes smart. that. Um, if I would have had to guess. But no, we are going to Outlaws versus Vegas Eternal. And uh, yeah, I liked Jake's line of thinking actually with the Doomfist. Um, I've seen Phyllis actually playing a little bit of Doomfist in Solo on stream recently. So I'm like, is that kind of Phyllis preparing for Doomfist play or is that kind of him just messing around? Because I'm going to be real, Scott. Doomfist is by far one of the best heroes in Solo right now for the tank role. Not a cosmetic hero. It's uh, very, very strong. <laughs> It's not a cosmetic hero at all. I think the issue with Doomfist is the more coordinated play gets, the more difficult it is to get value from Doomfist because players aren't going to shoot your empower, your, your block to give you the empowered punches. If you do, they're going to have the counters to you. Vegas Eternal rolling out on a more, what we would expect traditional composition, playing the Alari with the Baptiste, with the uh, Arista in the front line, while Houston Outlaws giving a different look, playing an Echo, Ana, and a Kiriko of all things. Yeah, the Kiri's quite interesting. I mean, you're not, you can cleanse, however, the Captive Sun. I just want to point that out uh, because it's like a dot, you can cleanse it. So any big ultimate that Irony does end up getting off um, could be cleansed by Violet. Uh, however, giant ant onto you. Force the lamp out of Rack Attack. As well as that uh, pylon going down as Rack Attack falls. And uh, I mean, Violet kind of doing what Violet does best, just kind of ignoring the fight and just trying to take uh, little 1v1s. But it's nice that actually wins out that one with the help of his little turret. Yeah, he ends up getting the win, but the Houston Outlaws just corralled Vegas to turn into the corner. You can see the idea behind the Ana from Shu. Obviously, he's a phenomenal Ana player. If they drop the Biotic Grenade, all of a sudden, that sheer amount of healing that the Baptiste and the Alari can do doesn't mean anything. So to you, it's going to need to be very careful about getting caught by these Biotic Grenades, because that's what forced the lamp, and that's what ended up causing Rack Attack to fall. Oh, I can't wait to see some turret kills this game, honestly. Although the tarot is pretty hard to keep up and is definitely the worst part of Torp's kit, sadly. Not quite the uh, sixth player on the field. Pelican almost with that duplication too. A lot of good dupe targets as well, Scott, uh, in this meta for uh, Pelican. Knife already going down though. I don't think uh, Pelly is going to need to use the dupe whatsoever. A nano boost is uh, more than enough to clean this fight. Eternal just feel like every time they step up, they're losing a player from there. It just crumbles down. Knife thinking, maybe the turret is useful, uh, useless as well, and switches over to the Hanzo. Now, your Outlaws just firmly in control of this series as we expected, what? and they have ultimates and what is violent, violent on the doing? flank with the Kiriko. <laughs> Okay, so you, I oh, Okay, <laughs> Violet is just straight trolling this. <laughs> Look at the smile. He's, he knows what he's done. 
<laughs> I mean... Me when I troll. Me when I troll, actually. There's the window. Phil is spinning the spear to get himself uh, back to the rest of his team. 75% for the Outlaws, and because Arissa is rather unkillable when she has that shift off and the spear, it's going to be tough for them to really dislodge it. Pelican already going down, though, and a visor ripped from high ground. Dub is a little bit scared, and I would be too. Grabbed in by the Terra Surge as Irony launches out that captive sum, but it doesn't matter. Dub and Rack Attack are already dead. Same with that miniature pylon. And it, <laughs> I mean, Violet, he do be trolling just a little bit, but uh, not trolling hard enough for Vegas to actually well, hold on for the point for any longer than a couple of seconds as the Houston Outlaws are going to try and find the reflex. Yeah, Vegas, uh, yeah, finding a little bit of percentage point, but at the end of the day, they just don't have enough tools to be able to get rid of the Outlaws. Night Falls, 97%. Oh, Is anyone God. going to be out of touch? What's scarier Night Night. than one Orissa? Two Orissas. Oh, no. <laughs> Honestly, probably the best copy, Scott. Like, how... The, the benefit of copying a tank in, like, old uh, old Echo's alter, old duplication, was that you get that giant HP pool. You don't get that anymore. You are capped when you copy a tank now. So if you copy a tank with some sort of defensive tool, like an Orisa, which can just hit the shift, hit that fortify, or hit the spear spin to survive a couple of seconds, you can pretty much weigh out the entirety of your duplicate and almost guarantee yourself an ultimate. And I've actually seen, uh, just in the rank game since Alari came out as well, duplication of the Alari is actually quite oh, yeah. uh, solid because Free you off. can instantly throw out the healing pylon and that charges your ultimate very quickly that can give you that offensive ultimate. So maybe we'll see that from Pelican as well. It's Houston Outlaws rolling out on the exact same thing. The Eternal, very similar with some slight changes. Sojin and Bastion this time, maybe thinking they need just more damage with Knife going over to the wheels mode. Nice pylon placement, Scott, I will say. Yeah, great. It's been really interesting. Obviously, these very, very micro plays from the Alaris already, where they put their pylons. Do you want to put it somewhere that it's very hard to kill? And that is one of those spots. As long as they don't give up this uh, small bit of ground here. And you can see that they understand that the Outlaws are trying to take this from them with the Kiriko and the Soldier. Just fighting for it. Oh, do need to be careful. Nice getting low, but Catch is happy with the grenade, and that's going to be hard for the Outlaws. It is. Now we Vegas capping the points. A little brief or a swift TP away from Violet. Pelican. Oh, surprise. <laughs> Pelican. All righty. Well, he's dead. I mean, the Houston Outlaws, they just want to reset. Just, just go again. Uh, as well, a big benefit for the supports on the Outlaws side, apart from Violet, who is uh, flanking permanently, is Shu is getting so much healing because Fearless takes so much damage. So you're almost guaranteeing yeah. yourself a nano every single fight, too. Because the Orisa, like a lot of other tanks, you can play aggressively and take the damage because you have so many tools to keep yourself alive, but then that can just be constantly healed up as Violet trolls Caught once trolling. again and goes down. Caught trolling. Maybe not trolling. It's hard to wouldn't really know, but he does fall first at the very least. And this is more percentage coming up for Eternal, and it hasn't cost them a single ultimate yet, Jack. It has not. They're just going pretty low. Should get healed up by Shu in a moment. Healed up by Shu in a moment. Should. Okay, there you go. All good. Spear spin. Yeah, Vegas Eternal got big ults. And uh, wow, Pelican goes down again. Knife, Knife with these nade kills. Uh, he's he's going a little silly right now. He's going a little bit crazy. And there you go. Dove rips the overclock, or sorry, just the regular railgun. As the Vegas Eternals pushing Outlaws all the way to their spawn doors. 50 plus percent building up. And this is how the composition, this shooter composition, as it's been dubbed, is supposed to work. You have multiple shooting threats from multiple different angles. As you can see, Irony and Knife playing on the off angle, while the, Etern the rest of the Eternal team plays from main. There's just so many threats coming in that you will find these picks over and over okay. again for almost free. Where are we going? Straight on top of Happy. Oh! Happy's in trouble. Ooh. Nope. Force but out Pelican the lap. falls anyway. But Pelican dies. Yep. Uh-oh. Oh. Okay. Violet got his one. Violet got his one. <laughs> but Dub gets two. So, not great. Thanks, Eternal. Still have ultimates online, on the point at least, with Dove's overclock. Have to play a little bit more safe now as Irony comes back with the captive sun. Shoe pretty low. There's the overclock. Narrowly missing Shoe's head. However, the entirety of the Outlaws are split up. Big problems for Violet right now with no oh, ultimate. Miss. But Dove is stuck. Oh, oh no. he's stuck in the corner. He couldn't quite escape the wrath of Fearless's Terror Surge. 99% for the Vegas Eternal, though, as they save one ult in the bank. Irony using that shift to get away. That outburst, not quite enough to save. Him as Shu deals the final dish uh, lick of damage, and that will be a team kill and a point cap for the Outlaws. I think Dove really wishing we didn't spectate that one from him. Missed a couple of integral shots and also went on to fall as he switches over to the soldier. 
And now they're the ones who are going to have to walk into these like multiple angles of the Houston Outlaws. Just, they need to find a way to deal with this Violet because the way the Outlaws got in is Violet playing this aggressive flank way, which as we've said, feels like trolling. It is the way you need to play on the Kiriko. You need to have that offensive threat because you can TP back to your team at any moment. Very early Suzu there for Violet. I wonder if Otello did manage to catch that. There's the window, a knife already dying to Happy's just Helix Rocket across the map. I mean, this winner's going to get nothing at this point. 2U's got Terra Surge, but it's being pushed off the point by Phyllis's Spear Spin. And as Happy finds a nice little flank angle, getting some additional damage down. He's got to be careful, though. A one, almost a one-shot headshot there by Irony with a bit of an extra damage. That would have been a kill. But no, it's actually Irony that ends up going down. And now Outlaw is kind of picking the Vegas Eternal apart. You still got another fight here, Scott. But all this meanwhile, your ultimate bank advantage from the Eternal is just going by the wayside as Outlaws didn't need to use any ults apart from that window in that, uh, in that fight there. And Eternal just, they're the ones making the mistakes now. They're the ones getting picked time and time again. And as you said, Outlaws have been able to build up their ult bank. So as we get close to 80%, this is last fight for the Eternal and they don't have as many tools as the Outlaws do. So this will be a difficult fight. Captain, Tur uh, Captain Sun and uh, the Terra Surge is available. Shoot Shoot is already dead. There's no lamb to help you now. Captain Sun comes out from Irony. He is going to find one, but it's Pelican who uses the Duke to escape that detonation damage and kills Knight as well with the stickies from across the map. The point flip does end up coming through as the Vegas Eternal are putting themselves on it. And with a Terra Surge available, it should be the round. Dove, yep, with the Helix Rockets killing Violet. There's nothing that Visor could have really done from Happy. And that'll be a round to Vegas. An unlikely round two. It seemed like Outlaws were able to win it quite easily in that first one, but small mistakes. And Violet trolling just a little bit on the Kiriko there, Scott. We're going to a round number three. Shu, I don't know how he got caught. It happened off screen, but maybe just taking a little bit too much spam damage. Maybe we'll see it right here. Oh, Phyllis. No, this is just dub. Oh, this is the dub 3k towards the end, cleaning everything up. The soldier did get a buff in the patch. Not the most recent one, but in the past where they gave him an extra damage point. We didn't see him in the Sombra meta because Soldier just isn't good in a, so a Soldier, you know, sorry, Sombra Winston dive meta. But the damage is so consistent and you can see Dove instantly getting value out of it. He goes back to it in this round as well as the Houston Outlaws feel us on his signature Winston. Let's see how he's going to hold up to the amount of damage the Eternal have. That pylon spot seems OP. <laughs> Wow, you, you cannot kill that uh, if you're the Houston Outlaws. It's like such a safe place to be. Uh, ooh. All right. Well, Dove's dead. Dive, dive, dive for the Houston Outlaws. I mean, you might as well. You're so good at it. Fairly is one of the best there ever was at Winston. Dove's actually going to switch over to the Tracer. I like this. Recognizing if he stays on the Soldier, he's going to be dove over and over again. Outlaws are going to be the aggressors. They just need to stay alive and play together and make it so they're helping each other, working off of each other so that these divers can't find the value that they've already been finding. It's a first point cap as well. Houston Outlaws. In Come control. back to Soldier. He can't work out what he wants to play. Is anybody else going back to spawn right now? It looks like Rack Attack as well. Okay. Big swaps wow, from the Vegas Eternal. Yeah, almost every single person on the roster there switching up. Okay, interesting. This is actually something that we saw. Oh, I can't remember exactly the team, but we saw this in the Eastern region overnight. What happens is when they try and dive you, we know how strong Junker Queen is against the Winston. So we don't need to play this high damage thing. Just play a composition that is tried and tested against the dive. Yeah, you do not want to dive into a Queen, that's for sure. That's where she is at her strongest, up close and personal. Nana Boost onto Fearless, though. Very early ultimate. And this is the problem with control here, Scott. You lose that point uh, flip first, and then you change your composition. You're just at such a disadvantage. Your old bank's not as strong. And then the Houston Outlaws only need to invest one to win the preceding fight. They just nano fearless. They kill knife. There's no follow-up to any sort of push there from the Vegas Eternal. And now you're almost looking at last fight. And Vegas Eternal's highest ult charge is at 60%, while, as you said, nearing last fight territory in Houston Outlaws, they're going to have every other ultimate pretty much coming up. Both DPS, they have the Katsune Rush. If you're the Eternal, you want to get in the Outlaws' face, but they have the tools to deal with that. Big flank as well. You see Happy and Violet holding hands once again on the sidelines. They're eventually 
sniffed out, but they can't commit too much here. Vegas Town will need to dive as one, Scott. They can't send Knife in a 2v1. You're just going to lose it. And in fact, Irony is going to join them. And it looks like Happy does bow out. However, here's the last fight, Scott. The Blades and the Rush. Oh, it's too easy for Pelican. And that healing station isn't going to save you now. Even the JQ pretty vulnerable to the sharpness of Pelican's Blade. Shu finishes off Knife with a nade, and that will be it. Overtime, 99 to 0. And Outlaws will claim the first match. And that's really the what we talked about with Winston might see some play in situations and maps where Winston has been historically strong. You could see it be played again where you can play around those corners, you can set up those effective dives. And with what feels like some prominence of Genji in this meta, it might not be as easy to play the Baptista Lari, this very greedy damage backline as you would have thought. There we go. Still around though off of the Houston Outlaws, who do need to win their game, Scott. Um, one thing that yeah. we pointed out on the desk at the very start of the day, um, how important these next few games are for the top teams that aren't the Atlanta Reign. The Houston Outlaws, if they do find the dub here, and especially if it's a 3 0 they're in such a good spot going into play in slash or just playoffs, right? Um, scary situation for a lot of teams that are watching this game right now. The Boston Art Rising, the Florida Mayhem. I mean, you you would kind of think the Houston Outlaws are going to win this one, right? I mean, Vegas Town, they're still winless. So you would imagine Houston Outlaws come away with a 3-0, maybe a 3-1 um, out of this series. And then they face London Spitfire later on. Um, we'll have to wait and see after this break how it's going to go down. Are we going to see some more crazy comp swaps? I hope so. Eichenwalder will be the yeah. next map. We'll see you in a bit.
yo, 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 crank that volume, turn it way up. Get your weapon, get your blade out. Damn damage, then you gon' pay up. Yo, 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 crank that volume, turn it way up. Get your weapon, get your blade out. Damn damage, then you gon' pay up. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back, Houston Outlaws, with a uh, 2-1 victory on Antarctic Peninsula over the Vegas Eternal. And yeah, we saw a little bit of fun, a little bit of trolling was to be had. No Alari, unfortunately, from the Outlaws yet, though. Scott, only coming out from irony in this uh, map so far, or in this series so far. And, and this is a common thing that usually happens when you have this big meta shift or a new hero come in. Everybody tries it and everybody wants to force it, especially a fun hero like Alari. Everyone wants to force it into the meta. Everyone wants to make it good, especially with how much damage she does. But I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few teams that are like, what if we just don't play Alari and we play the other heroes that we also know are very good and we can just utilize that to counter Alari than these teams that are potentially playing a suboptimal comp because they think it's good. Yeah, I think that's maybe one of the reasons why Violet was running Kiriko. Because you can cleanse the captive son. And being able to save somebody's life from that can be wonderful, right? I don't know. I don't know what, good, ad good adjective. Insert good adjective. It's good. It, it's a good thing. Because the Alari wants to be able to focus people down, using the ability to just get into the skybox, and then hit you with the ult, follow up some damage, make them explode, and then just uh, wipe them from the team fight, right? But if Violet is just kind of chilling on the Kiri, and just hits them with a Suzu, they're good to go. They can just either run away or they can uh, do whatever. But okay, whatever. I don't I don't care what I just said because right now we are seeing Rack Attack on the Weaver. Now, Rack Attack, okay, to be fair, Scott, Rack Attack has been playing Weaver over the last few weeks. However, prior to it getting buffed. Prior yeah. to it getting buffed, right. So, how are you feeling? I Well, I've been become a big believer of life. We've actually been playing it a lot on uh, on stream and Rack Attack actually came into my chat and he was like, well, now you guys think Life Weaver is good, okay? I told you guys. So now he genuinely believes in this pick and I talk about it a little bit in our previous series that the sheer amount of healing that you can do with this pick and then that enables you to get a lot of Tree of Life's up and the damage with how much the spread has been reduced is actually quite consistent as well. So I'm curious to see how much value Rack Attack can get with this. Outlaws, they're going back to the composition that they played pretty much on Antarctic Peninsula, except with Happy now on a Tracer. Maybe seeing that Life Weaver and thinking Tracer is the counter. And guess who's in the back line? It's Pelican, but it's also Violet. I saw the little TP <laughs> from, from Violet to Pelican to get onto the doors. I mean, this is how you undo this comp, right? You just have to get multiple angles because Vegas really are just playing this hunker down comp. Just build a house, build a little uh, turret, and then you're good to go. But Ooh, not so much anymore. Violet with a couple of nice body shots there onto Dove. A little bit of additional damage from Pelican, I would imagine, to take him out. One big DPS threat now eliminated. And Kiriko also re received like a side grade of her body shots do more damage, but her headshots do slightly less damage. So you actually get a lot of value from just throwing shurikens into the body. It's getting very close to capturing this out to use, trying to touch the point. Bro, Violet just solos knife through the E, I would imagine, too. Okay, well, Violet just doing Violet things, I suppose. Nano boost from Shu, 6 HP, still survives. Tree comes out from the Vegas Eternal, but can they actually touch the point? No, they cannot. Tree invested and wasted. In fact, no touches and no hope to defend first. And you can see just the amount of healing that the Life Weaver can do, just keeping everyone alive. The big issue that you run into with Life Weaver is you keep everyone alive, but you don't have that offensive threat. And that's why, even though Eternal were able to stay in that fight for so long, they're just not returning the picks. They're not finding value of their own. Now was with a pretty quick first point capture and only have to commit the pulse bomb. Oh, but happy. Oh, happy gets taken down by Irony. And this is... This is why a lot of people haven't been playing Tracer into sort of a lot of these sort of high damage compositions because it's very easy to get picked. But Violet finds the trade back getting irony. Yeah, I mean, you you got to marvel at Violet's ability to find kills, even on the flank, like so mechanically gifted. 
One of the best players to touch the game, no doubt. Oh, a little trap there set on the stairs. <laughs> that little petal was uh, set to maybe launch Violet into the skies. Didn't matter in the end. Shooters end up falling here, Scott. But Violet is just still on its head. If he gets another kill, this would just be ridiculous. Like, Rack Attack is healing him up. Throws the Suzu at his feet. Still willing to trade. Oh, really thought he could hit that. Really thought he could make that flank work. But still a lot invested to try and force Violet away. Violet is showing no respect to this Vegas Eternal team, just not believing in them to be able to hit the shots, but Irony has been getting a couple of really good picks on this uh, Alari so far. The Outlaws, they are getting point progression, oh, but they don't have the positioning. Great spear, spear takes yes. down the uh, flux of 2 Yeah, spear from Phyllis, his 2U straight out of the flux. Pelican's got the Nano. There are 15 fights happening at once. I'll try and cover all of them. Rack attacks in trouble on the high ground as Dove and Knife take down the back line of the Houston Outlaws. These comps, they're just so scrappy. Very deathmatchy, in fact. The, yeah, these compositions are going to lead to this. It's not as Ooh. teamwork heavy it, as we son. saw the Winston Tracer Sombra. It's going to be more about individual skirmishes fighting all over the point, especially when you have Tracers and Echoes added into the mix as well. To you, he has got to be careful, cannot get picked, as it feels like the Outlaws and the team fight in general has finally stabilized. Arne almost got thrown off that there. Another good spear from Fearless. Check it. The LR. Captive Sun. Oh, it's available. Not sure you want to use it just yet, though. Another outburst to gain some positioning. Good spear onto Dub on the high ground. Man, his accuracy with spears is crazy, actually. Suzu used by Violet to get him out of there real fast. And one of the things that Life Weaver really enables as well is their direct healing onto Tracer and Echo. Obviously, they're characters that like to be all around the map, but Life Weaver can heal from a very far away. Captive Sun finally coming out. Oh, Violet Violet in the basement. Violet just rich the rush. Can you get out Where there? Oh no! Yeah, they, you can't get up that high irony! Oh! <laughs> it doesn't send you that high, unfortunately. That'll be Pelican picking up those uh, that kill with the help of those spears. Just a little bit of movement just uh, guarantees him uh, the kill credit. Oh dear, this is um, this is a game right now. Yeah, what do you say? It is breaking down left and right. There is just yeah. no rhyme or reason. <laughs> Only chaos as flanks and duels are happening all over the map. The tree. Another tree for Rack Attack. We saw how valuable it was last time. Oh, he's trying to get away. Forest planted, but Pelican has already killed two. I mean, that's it, really. Three. Three for Pelly. Okay, just give him the 5k2. You're not capping the point. You're not stopping this one. The tree's healing it to you up, I suppose. Even use the beam for a little bit of deforestation there. Dove with the triple blink and the recall to try and touch the points. Three minutes, though, going into castle phase as 2U is finally dead. Yes, Pelican doing a bit of a Sylvanas Three. cosplay for a little bit there, utilizing the beam if it's below half health gonna do a ton of damage so it's it's almost worth it if you have the time to be able to take down that tree but outlaws still continuing to move playing this like Anna Kiriko as Fearless back on this Winston and Eternal see the Winston instantly make the swap back to the Queen pretty easy to get it done too on this point that's for sure happy with the pulse just checking nine nine takes half his HP and damage already has to dash away that was a good leap by Fearless. Could have capitalized on it, but the lamp was there to save Knife's health bar. Pulse bomb thrown out, doesn't find much, but of course, Violet is already in the kill feed. Irony now in trouble. Primal Rage for Fearless separates the team, and Scott, I might just want to call it now. This point is probably going to be capped. Uh, knife on the Widowmaker. There's the rush, and there is the point. Fearless saved from that pulse bomb by the Suzu. I mean, two U is out. It's going to require a miracle of the highest order from Knife to f try and find any sort of just uh, balance to that fight. Houston Outlaws, they end up capping. One minute and 57 seconds remaining as the Vegas Eternal now try their attack. Yeah, I, Outlaws just really flexing their muscles, proving that they are through and through the better team. There are a team full of superstars and Vegas Eternal, they're trying to get in the mud, play scrappy with the Houston Outlaws and that's where players like Pelican Violet thrive. So... Jack, follow me here. Do you Yo. believe, and let me put my tinfoil hat on for just a moment. Okay. Do you ever think there's a world in which Outlaws, they recognize we only have to play Vegas Eternal and London Spitfire. Let's not show what we have in our arsenal. Let's not show what we think the strongest composition is. Or do you genuinely believe in this Ana Kiriko setup from the Outlaws? I think the way Violet is playing, especially with Pelican and Happy, 
like Pelican or Happy finding a flank, Violet hitting the TP, which is how you want to play the Kiriko, but Violet yeah. is taking just some silly duels. Like, but he is getting away with it 50% of the time. 50% or more of the time, right? So, yeah. honestly, yeah, I could follow that line of thinking because if you're going into a uh, play-ins, playoffs scenario and you aren't changing patch and you're not expecting the meta to solidify onto this one comp or change drastically, yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's a very well real chance that the Outlaws right now are potentially hiding something that they are extremely strong at, knowing that they can take down the Vegas Eternal or the London Spitfire uh, by playing a little bit cheeky. And, and there's obviously some level of confidence in this composition, and, and it makes sense in its own right, but a part of me thinks maybe there's something more we're not seeing as Byrony moves over to the Kiriko of his own and takes down Pelican. Pelican finally punished for just sort of playing so aggressively and dive bombing consistently. Yeah, you still got to be careful of the Kiri headshots, regardless of the small damage nerf. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, Violet's obviously taken those duels. Oh, can you get the mini? Can you get the mini? Oh, we did. Uh oh, Violet. Irony in the little 1v1. Please respect the 1v1. Do not shoot. But yeah, every, nobody help. Nobody help. Okay, 1v1. Well, we are watching a, right. an idiot fight almost there. Like, no one was hitting anything. <laughs> All right. Well, the fight will continue off of the point still. Violet hitting the headshot onto Dove. Three minutes for the Vegas Turtle. However, the squad, they do end up having two uh, checkpoints there. As we were watching that whole fight, that was Vegas Turtle. Uh, Kitten, at least two. A little boop off the map, potentially. Could see rush use pretty early. window. As a run through the window for... Uh, Fearless. Yeah, I mean, you just walk through that. That's a, a very is absolutely window. crushing on this Kiriko right now. They, it doesn't feel like Eternal really have many tools to be able to deal with this Kiriko, who's just permanently flanking into the team. They're leaving Shu to be able to cover everything in the backline alone, and Violet's essentially just helping Happy and Pelican be that executor. And Eternal just haven't really been able to find any way to deal with it, other than what we saw in the first map. So. Maybe they need to make some adjustments. Irony went over to the Kiriko and I guess put on some level of pressure, but right now, Violet is feasting. Dub on the Tracer. Oh man, there's the Nano. Blade available from Pelican. Not sure he even needs to rip it. No, he does not. Yeah, this is a flattening right now. Yeah. Well, this... now it is. It was always going to be hard, you know, Eternal having to make so many swaps. There was a little bit of hope that I, all of us had that, like, maybe this would be a meta where, you know, a lot of the new additions, Knife, Irony, and to you would feel a lot more comfortable than having to play this, like, coordinated Winston Tracer Sombra. But right now, regardless of how much they might have made improvements, this could be a good meta for them. Outlaws just proven they're one step better. God. Violet is putting on so much. He forced a recall a second ago. He forced a Suzu on his own. He's 2v1-ing a lot of the time. He is just such a well. scary player. Yeah, 5% away, right? Kutsune Rush, though, coming out from already first. TP away, though, from Violet. He's finally dead. He's finally put to rest. But Pelly can... Yeah, he's going to pull the blade. I'm not sure you're going to be able to escape from that one rack attack. 1 HP. Ooh. Oh, but I've chased him down. And the point was capped. All the meanwhile, Scott, they uh, only needed one tick, so all good. All good. Next turn, I'm going to get it through the doors, at least. Finally able to punish Violet, and from there, they're able to follow through and get the rest of the capture and get things moving through this second point. Outlaws, pretty solid defense, though, on that first point. You can understand the idea. Knife throws uh, a pulse uh, bomb. Shu jumped Shu as well. into that. <laughs> I saw Shu. It's We've like that brief that moment of Zana of, like, which way do I jump? Oh, it's too late. I, <laughs> I have made my choice, and it was the wrong one. Rest in peace. It's always when it's flying by you, you start jumping the other way, and then you realize it's fly it flew past you into where you've decided to jump as Real right. doesn't even matter for the outlaws. They just go aggressively with the Kitsune Rush, use that advantage to sort of fill in the hole of being one player down and just eviscerate the Eternal. Yeah, I mean, how close are you going to hold? Ideally pretty close with the Winston comp, although you've got to be scared of 2U with the Terra Surge. they got to know 2U's got it. I'm in they also want to like, give Eternal a little bit of space so that they can't just disengage back into the spawn and also enable Shu to just play in this positioning. It's so defensible. Like, how do you do anything if you're the Eternal to deal with Shu? Is that a Suzu? I think that was a recall by Knife. Yes, I believe Suzu it was. is just... <laughs> Every ranked Kiriko ever. Yeah, he's just playing in the back line. Overclock uh, pulled oh. from Dove. A trade there in the favor of the Outlaws. Oh man, that was no clock and a window. 
Scott, so yeah. And and that that this composition from Eternal is just so immobile. Like, how do you do anything at Dove? They have no breathing room. They're just being suffocated by the pressure of Outlaws. There's so many threats. You got the Kiriko, you got the Winston, you got the Genji, you got the Tracer. They're just circling and sort of hounding Eternal into the castle. Kitsune rush from Irony, I think, to go up the castle, finally taking out Shu. Uh, well, Violet's back to his old ways, just on the flank still. He's doing a little bit of healing, don't worry, guys. He's healing. Payload is moving a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, nice got Pulse, and uh, they did move the payload a little bit, I suppose. There's the Primal Rage, though. I mean, happy finding two kills in that fight. I mean, don't think it's any... <laughs> I like the little hello there by the Winston. That was sort of <laughs> Dove ends up dying to the Primal. There's a minute left, Scott. Tuj still hasn't been able to find any way to use this Terra Surge. Irony winning the 1v1 versus Violet. So maybe that's the window to get you two you those. in, but... How do you Terra Surge anything if you're two? Who are you using the Terra Surge on? If you can get on Shu, that's great. Every other character for the Houston Outlaws can teleport out of the Terra Surge. So you just kind of have to rip it if you're two you at this point. Yeah, ideal target is Shu. Are you going to get Shu? Probably not. You're trying that. Oh, He's maybe. making good use of it. Can you drag him back on? He can. He dragged him back to high oh, ground. No, There's no, no way. There's no way. Do you drop to the floor and he drags you back to the high ground? Oh, it's pain, man. Well, there's Fearless in the back. He's been pushed away. Good night, a good nade from Shu. It was instantly cleansed, but Violet's back. Is, was that a yawn from Fearless? All right. Man. I think that was a yawn. It didn't I look like a yell. It looked like a yawn. Come on, Fearless, man. Oh, dear. Well, there's five seconds to go. And Violet's in the spawn. Oh, well, that is just, a, as you said, Jack, an absolute flattening here from the Outlaws, looking to be in prime form, <laughs> regardless so of what composition they play. Yeah. Obscene, I need you to do me a favor. Get the yeah, two Terra Surge back up. I want to see Shu yeah. go to the ground and then get sucked back up into the Terra Surge up to high ground again. <laughs> I appreciate all of you. He's now yeah, with a two up there, Mr. President. Yeah, <laughs> actually, let me let me lift you back up as I sink back down. Just trading places. Our laws do end up uh, taking that map, Scott. A two zero. Um, we are going over to Flashpoint as our next map. So I'd imagine we're seeing a, a couple of changes here in terms of compositions. But yeah, this this match was very much going to go the way of the Outlaws, as everybody kind of expected. Would it be a clean 3-0? Right now, it very much feels like it. And the Outlaws do need these dubs right now. They do end up facing the London Spitfire a little bit later on. And, you know, any kind of win here for the Houston Outlaws is a good win. If you could make it a 3-0 if there's any ever a time where match differential makes a difference, then hey, uh, a, a plus six will be nice if they can win against the London Spitfire 3-0 as well. Because um, they're currently 11 and 3, right, Jack? Right? right. If they win this one, they go to 12 and 3. And then if they if they can close it oh, out it in their next match as well against the e Oh, no! Straight back on ice. That's crowd. so sad. <laughs> all right, I'll fill them in with all the standings uh, report later. But we have Suravasa yes. coming up next. Stick around. We'll be back after this break.
Houston Outlaws with a 2-0 right now over the Vegas a Vegas Eternal. It's like they're playing a Demir Control deck, Scott. Vegas Eternal getting nothing done right now. Too many counters uh, from the Houston Outlaws currently. And <laughs> this is one of them right now. Violet just perma-flanking on Kiriko. I don't know if you can call this a counter. This just feels like an excessive amounts of confidence coming out of Violet. And we know how, like, and it's almost been lauded coming into this meta of like how flexible the support lineup of the Houston Outlaws is. They have two of the mechanically best flex supports or support players in general in this game. And they can play the Anakiriko. They can probably play the Alari Baptiste. They can play so many different things and they change the game in a different way, right? Like how many times have we seen a Kiriko do what we just saw Violet doing the Kiriko? 14 final blows in <laughs> on Eichenwalder. Six deaths, 22% critical hit accuracy. He almost did 10K hero damage per 10 minutes. He almost out damaged his healing. That's ridiculous from That's Violet. That's Violet for you. That is Violet, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, uh, pretty good on the Kiriko. And honestly, the style of play does kind of work, especially um, when you have someone like Happy as well, Pelican kind of backing you up there. You can play as a little two-man squad and you can trust in the rest of your team to hunker down or just kind of pressure the tank in the front line. Uh, <laughs> Violet, with a little grin. There was a couple of moments there where you're like, is he ever just going to teleport away or would he rather just go back to spawn? You know, he's just like on the high ground, two versus one, Suzu's himself, has swift step, just decides to take the duel anyway. I love it. The confidence is great uh, from the Houston Outlaws right now and they should be confident. And it's also like, I think it's worth noting here, it's not a huge troll by the Outlaws. This isn't them just purely disrespecting the Vegas Eternal. Right. This might be a strategy that they will use against any other team because it is viable. That's something that makes Kiriko so difficult to deal with. That Suzu Swift step, as you were just talking about, it might just feel like it's getting more value than it really should because Vegas Eternal currently do not have an answer to it. Yeah, zero answers right now. We're going to move on to Flashpoint. Suravasa is up next. And this is... A the game mode that will change in terms of comps. So I'm curious if Outlaws are going to stick with the same thing. I mean, the Houston Outlaws, are they ever going to bring out the Alari? Or is our like tinfoil hat conspiracy true, right? Are they going to be saving something for opponents later down the line, play in slash playoffs and go from there? Of course, yet to be seen. But Suravasa, that's what we do know is up next. And we, we just saw Suravasa. We've been slowly starting to get a feel for these maps and Last time we saw the Lucio paid dividends for the London Spitfire because it gave them that freedom to move around the map. They were able to take fights at multiple different points than just being on the point. And that's where, you know, these double, you know, flex support, these shooter comps really fall flat is when you're stuck standing still and you can't deal with any of the flanks and you're not able to find the picks. And that's what the Outlaws have been doing so well against Vegas Eternal so far in this series. Just running them down and hunting them down before they're able to find any damage. We do have a small tech issue um, from one of the players. So we are just going to quickly, well, we're not going to go to a break just yet. We're just going to hopefully solve it in just a moment and then uh, get into this next map. But uh, yeah, it's looking like a 3-0 from the Outlaws from this perspective. Desk is looking pretty correct and 90 plus percent of the chat looking pretty correct too. So give yourselves a pat on the back. Oh, we did it. We did it. You know, yeah, Vegas Eternal. As I said, they don't really have anything to fight for at this point because they are already knocked out of the play-ins uh, run. But I think everyone is cheering for the Vegas Eternal to find some form of victory. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and a lot of the play. There's a lot of talent on the roster. And then uh, hopefully we see them again soon. We're going to jump to a quick break, though. Tech issue taking a little bit longer than we expected to sort out. So we'll be right back.
Welcome back. We are ready to go. Don't worry. We're jumping in. Suravasa is the next map. Flashpoints is the mode. And yeah, here we go, Scott. Let's see what Outlaw's going to bring out here. Because Outlaw's, they're already extremely strong team. Very flexible. But, uh, man, it's a big map on, big on rotations. You've got to get there first, dude. You've got to get, you got to win these fights. These fights that, uh, with the transition periods between point to point. What I'm saying is, fearless. Please play Doom. Oh. <laughs> Jake was hyping up the Doomfist heading into this series. You know, he did get the Seismic Slam. Has a one second cooldown uh, reduction on that ability. A one second which cooldown. Is, which was well, a reduction of that, it, which <laughs> that is meaningful, crazy. right? It yeah, is, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. It just slamming all over the place. But it's meaningful because that changes the flow and the cycle of him. That made him a lot easier to play in a lot of regards. So... The issue with Doomfist is I think we would see more of him if Orisa hadn't just been super buffed up yeah. the wazoo, now her fortify. Because Doomfist essentially gets countered by everything Orisa does. She can javelin him out of the power block. She can fortify every time he goes for a punch. Like, it's just so many counters. But if anyone was going to try it in any series, if someone was going to pull it out, it could be the Houston Outlaws right now 2-0 up against the Eternal. Yeah, I mean, the spear instantly takes you out of the power block. So it's pretty rough for Doomfist, but... If you're thinking maybe to use playing the queen, maybe you run Doom. Come on, Fearless. He's hovering it and he's standing by the door. Wait a second. Hang on a second. Hold your horses. Wait, wait. Wait for it. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, oh, it's yes. yes. Fearless on the Doomfist. I mean, he's been terrorizing Solo Q. I'm just saying. Like, that pick is crazy right now. And the first point is going to be market as they run in here and take positioning. Very similar compositions outside of the tanks. They're both playing the Lucio Kiriko. So there's going to be a lot of poking and prodding, waiting for an opportunity to dive. If you're to you, you need to be careful. If you give the empowered punch to Fearless, he will be able to execute one of the backliners if he can get on top of them. Yeah, even a frontline, to be fair as well, if you stun Knife or Dove, like, you're dead. You are very, very dead. All right, Fearless trying to bait out a little summit. Some point cap goes to Eternal. Now taking a fair bit of damage though, so have to be careful if you're two, you can't play that far up. Actually punched off the point by Fearless, so the rest of the Vegas turn will have to just corral around him. There's the punch in, Dove in trouble, and there's the engage. Just the seismic slam, just hitting everybody, the AoE damage, and then Pelican following up. Beautiful stuff. There's the slam, and uh, to you is history. I almost wonder if the Outlaws were fading to you to use the commanding shout and go in, because as soon as he did that, Houston Outlaws disengage and then fully engage, knowing they don't have that overhealth or that major cooldown that's going to give them the sustainability. Eternal just don't have the, the healing or the life pool to be able to withstand the dive from Pelican and Fearless and Outlaws getting percentage up. They did trade 30% with the Eternal, so it's not the worst thing, but Ultimates are starting to come up, but Eternal's lagging a little bit behind across the board. All right, I'm expecting a big Meteor Strike out of you, Fearless. I think he's got a power-up punch as well, Scott. Gotta be careful. To you taking infinite damage right now. Has to use the shout. Rush is available. I did see a double stun there by Fearless. It was on rack attack and to you. There's the rush, but Ooh. someone's got a heal dove. Luckily, Happy didn't have bullets to finish him off, but now he definitely will. A visor in the rush. Look at him go. Straight to the back line. No insta kills just yet. A good corralling of the uh, Vegas Eternal trying to get away. Both beats have been used, and now the blade has been pulled. A punch from, Pe uh, punch from Fearless to push everybody towards Pelican. And the blade is good for two. A nice reflect kill onto Irony. And there is the first point. Over to the Outlaws. And that punch by Fearless really opens the door for Pelican to just end the Eternal. But the blade was just able to get so much value at that point. And Dove and Knight weren't even able to pop their own offensive ultimates. So we move over to Palace, I believe we're going. But there's a fight happening off the point. Happy's the first one to get caught by Rack Attack. Uh, deflections, good. Oh, Pelican! Oh, just gets behind Dove. Dove tried to overextend, try and kill somebody, but Pelican was waiting right behind him. Ezio moment. There is the uh, blade available for Knife. Pelican kind of giving him the business right now. You've got to be careful. No dash. Now he gets the reset as Irony finds the kill onto the Genji. However, very scrappy fight, but with Fearless on the point now, even with his Lucio, they could be good. Knife pretty low, receives the commanding shout, so that little bit of overhealth is going to help him sustain. However, with this still with the blade, Outlaws have to be careful. He needs health, though. He needs to get health back. He can't pull this blade, and he only has a Lucio healing him. They might have to just concede this point they to the are. Houston Outlaws, regroup, get health back, so then they can come back in with the blade. 
but Knife's going to be careful. He needs the port soon. There it is. There's the blade. Violet is running as fast as he can away. Knife does end up going down, but it is a trade. DPS for DPS. But with the point in control of the Houston Allos right now, it's up to Vegas Eternal to try and make the moves. Meteor Strike doesn't find anybody. More of an escape tool there from Fearless. Another punch in, straight to the back line, hits the power bot. Not quite enough damage to actually charge that up to a punch. Nice little boot stops him from getting that slam damage down, but it is still 2U in the front line, just taking a meteoric amount of damage, Scott. It's hard to keep 2U alive when Irony and Rack Attack are so distracted. Oh, what a punch! Oh, the Ajax! Oh, Fearless is going to be happy with himself for that one. A punch out of the beats and Rack Attack, you can say goodbye to your ultimate. Oh, Fearless's Doomfist is really showing the strength of this hero in this meta. If we're not going to... Oh, there's an Ajax in chat by Rack Attack of all people <laughs> as well. And Rack Attack goes, you know what? Maybe I'll go Life Weaver. Oh, never mind. I'll go back to Lucio. But that is, like... Fearless is just making himself a threat, and it doesn't feel like the Eternal can deal with him. Like, you saw him just sort of existing in the back line of Eternal. He's just displacing player time after time, forcing abilities, forcing cooldowns, and forcing the Eternal back line to have to help each other that's leaving to you isolated alone. All right, next point unlocked. It's going to be Temple. Very quick rotation there for the Vegas Eternal. Scott, irony with the... Rush available, however, look at this. Outlaws just trying to take different early angles of attack, rush. but a very early rush, you're right. That means Outlaws just say, sure, we'll take that, and we've still got ults of our own. 10 seconds still remaining until the point even unlocks. There's a 30 second delay before it comes up. There it now is. Outlaws come in with their own rush. Rush on the point, Blade and Visor available, but they do need to pop anything. It's actually a turn or they're going to pop their own Visor, but Phyllis just sits there and tanks the damage. A free power up punch for the Doomfist as Dove finds next to nothing. In fact, it was just healing charge, ultimate charge for Shu and Violet. Another Visor ripped, this time Happy. They do use that speed boost to try and put him in a different position. Takes a little bit too much damage, but still dissuades the Eternal from pushing onto oh. the point. Knife jumps straight into the line of sights are happy and he is just oh he's just picked apart oh two you is going to go down too if they're not careful a nice little suzu keep him alive and a oh nice boop oh and to happy he didn't expect rack attack up in the rafters meteor strike straight on top of the team though and to you just resu uh just resorted to trying to run away with the shout unfortunately wasn't able to get away and there's fearless with a 4k and they didn't want to have to use the sound barrier or the meteor strike, but with Happy going down, just decide it's worth committing. Make sure you close out that fight because there's only one fight remaining on this point. Look at Houston Outlaws. They're lurking and they're going to go early with Pelican's Blade. There's one fight in the round, Scott. It's 80% and Pelican's pulled the blade. Sound barrier. Pretty early from Rack Attack, but a needed one at that. A lot of damage down. In fact, Knife just didn't know really where to look. He was getting slammed. He was getting bladed. Everything else under the kitchen sink. 99%. No touches. And the Houston Outlaws clean up the map, clean up the series. A swift 3-0 for Houston. Houston. Fearless cancels to use Rampage at the very end there as well. Just Houston Outlaws just putting on a clinic of how to play dive compositions in this new meta, how to play as a unit, and Vegas Eternal. Just no chance of keeping up as you see why we consider this Houston Outlaws team to be a super team. Every single individual player can pop off at any moment. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's two cancelled ultimates in that fight, right? Just from Fearless's punch. I mean, you don't even need a charge punch either. You can just quickly tap and hit somebody because it stuns them out of anything. Just a little boot and one beat and one rampage taken by Fearless in that last map alone. Looking good. Houston Outlaws with a swift 3-0 and map score might end up meaning something later down the line. Of course, that's yet to be seen with all the matches that are coming up over this weekend. But with a dub here, Scott, they're pretty happy with themselves. Outlaws are facing Spitfire soon, so you're thinking if they win that, they are in a prime position to be at the top of the standings, right next to Atlanta Rain. Although, let's uh, come back to the present for a brief moment. Let's have a look at the player of the match. Um, who's it going to be? It could have been Fearless, to be fair, after that last one, but I think Violet deserves it after all the cheeky little plays we saw on Icon Builder. Yeah, yeah, Violet just having his and way the with the channel well. because he just... Yeah, like this this Kiriko, we questioned it when it first came out. And we thought, you know, maybe a little bit of trolling from Violet. They've done it in the past, primarily in the Pro-Am. Obviously, that wasn't as important of a tournament. But Violet really showing, hey, I can. this is a legitimate pick. And then also going on to Suravasa, goes to his Lucio, a much improved hero for Violet. He wasn't that good at it when he first made this transition to main support. But you put his main support heroes that are 
playing much better at a top level. Pair it with his flex supports exactly like this Kiriko. He's a scary player to play against. 8.2 final blows per 10 as support. As support, yeah. That is crazy. Over 23 minutes too. Not looking bad whatsoever. And remember, MVP votings are out as well, Scott. So uh, worth keeping that in mind if you... Uh, he is up there. Yeah, exactly. If you love Violet that much, you can vote for MVP. Been pretty good. And yeah, Houston Outlaws taking that one as a 3-0. A and... This is where the scary moment begins for teams like Florida Mayhem and the Boston Uprising. Knowing that the Outlaws took a dub here could be a little bit dicey for you over the next couple of weeks. We're going to jump to uh, the desk, though. They're going to break that down, send us to a break, and then we've got two more epic games coming up just after this. That was a swift victory for the Houston Outlaws, very much like pretty much everyone out there predicted. But if you, Danny and Jake, back here to uh, you know break down all the action and everything that transpired on the server, we've got a few more uh, compositions bleh, to uh, discuss mm -hmm. after uh, this 3-0 victory. So let's dive right in and talk about how the Houston Outlaws got it done. Very good. Thank you. I think for me, I think the one that really stuck out was how like Houston Outlaws, not only are good at the Winston die, but they they showed us a lot of different compositions and at a very high level. We saw a lot of the new Orisa comp, but uh, with with the um, Ana and Kiriko that we haven't seen before. Not only that, of course, they they had their bread and butter, the Winston dive, and also uh, uh, on Flashpoint as well, they had uh, the Doomfist dive as well, something that we haven't seen. So a lot of different new looks for the Houston Outlaws. Yeah, I think uh, the dive looks were really strong, able to make that work. And I think for a lot of teams, they are going to struggle at these certain maps where dive is just very relevant, right? It's like very hard to deal with the amount of verticality mobility. Some teams might want to bring out this Sigma to counter Orisa, but you can just switch over to the dive and that's really difficult for Sigma to answer. So I think really for me that the key to the Outlaws composition is actually in the support line. It's the Ana and the Kiriko because by playing the Orisa comp with an Ana and a Kiriko, you are ready at any moment to transition to a dive comp. Um, you know, sure, on Servasa, on Flashpoint, the Lucio ends up being really good, so they're going to just commit right away uh, on the dive from the beginning. I think that won't be that strange. I think a lot of teams are going to play those Lucio comps on Flashpoint. But on the other maps where you're playing, you're feeling great, whether it's nanoing Pelican, you can nano the Orisa at times, uh, Violet's getting a ton of value on the Kiriko, and then switching over to the dive, like we know how good Houston is at dive, and then these are the perfect heroes you want to play dive, right? The Ana Kiriko, very greedy. And if you don't contest an Ana and let her just throw nades on her, uh, on, your, on your team rather, this hero is just so much value in every single meta. It looks great on the Doom as well here. Yeah, I mean, it's left to be seen how the Houston Outlaws will be faring against maybe a tougher opponent. However, their next one, I believe, is London Spitfire. Yep. So they might be able to, you know, push them a little further and make it a little bit harder for them. Uh, but Vegas Eternal, of course, they, they, they went down fighting, but it was nonetheless a 3-0 victory for the Houston Outlaws. Uh, of course, after what we've seen, even though it was against the Vegas Eternal, is there anything you're slightly worried about for the Houston Outlaws in this current meta? Do you think they just are such a well-rounded team with such a deep hero pool that they will be able to pick up everything on a high level? I mean, I think we're, we're very early days, right? Like every team so far has shown us subtly different looks. And I think over the coming weeks, teams are gonna refine things more and more. Maybe certain compositions are gonna arise as more dominant, but this always happens early in the meta. There's gonna be a ton of swapping and flexing. And I think in general, teams like Outlaws are gonna be happy with that. You know, having a lot of, of hero swaps means you're highly flexible, mechanically skilled players they're going to be the first ones to pick up a new meta, right? We saw that from Atlanta, the first half of the season. So insanely dominant on the Tracer Sombra. But, you know, months and months into that meta, other teams catch up, right? You can't, it's hard to stay on top forever. Other teams watch you, they, they take your ideas, they, they employ them themselves, they improve because they can just learn from what you're doing. And so I think the best teams, most high-skilled teams, are, are the, they thrive in a, in a big change because they get to sort of show people for the first time, the being the first to figure out what's the best comp, what's the best style, you get a huge reward for that. You're gonna win matches because the other team just, they haven't seen that yet. They don't know what to do against it yet. Um, so I think, honestly, the strongest teams aren't gonna be worried about this, because especially this season of the Overwatch League, the strongest teams are extremely flexible. None of them are like one-trick teams right now. I, this might be a hot take, but I just, I love it when it's, 
like the 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 meta right now. I mean, there's not the meta's not set. I think this is where like the games are a lot more fun. Where like it's it's not all about the merits, you know. Like there's tons of swaps going on, the back and forth. And I think this is like the time where it's like really fun to watch overall. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And it's not just the patch changes, meta changes. Of course, we're also having a new complete game mode yeah. with new maps, right? So everything right now is just brand new, hot and interesting. <laughs> and like no one knows what to expect. So there's... Enjoy, why are you why will it last? Every but <laughs> honestly, like it will last way past the grand finals, I believe, because there is still so much to figure out. And we only have yeah. so much time to go as we are nearing the end of the season. So uh, yeah, maybe there are some unlikely teams who just suddenly emerge and really be able to challenge those three top teams or four rather which have established themselves thus far this season now we do have a post game interview with our winner so Danny please take it away thank you Zoe and for today for post match interview we got none other than Pelican from Houston Outlaws Pelican congratulations on getting the quick 3-0 victory now I asked to talk to you because I think the last time we talked you specifically said that you didn't want to play Sombra anymore. Like you just, you were done playing Sombra and your wish sort of came true. You don't have to play Sombra anymore. So what's your read on the meta? How are you enjoying the new meta and you know, the whole uh, new map and everything? 자, 일단 오늘 승리를 축하드리면서 제가 펠리칸 선수랑 오늘 좀 말씀을 하고 싶다고, 싶다고 이렇게, 여, 이렇게 말씀을 한게 저번에 저희, 저희가 인터뷰를 했을 때 펠리칸 선수가 아 이제 썸브라는 좀 그만하고 싶다라고 하셨는데 그렇게 됐어요. 이제 서브를 안 하셔도 되, 되게 되셨는데 좀현 메타 좀 어떻게 좀 재밌나요? 좀 즐기시고 계신지 여쭤보고 싶습니다. 어 만약에 저희가 이 메타를 못했으면 재미가 없었을 것 같은데 그래도 저희가 잘하는 메타인 것 같아서 재미 없진 않아요. Okay. Uh, I mean, if we were bad, sort of. We were, if we were not good, if we were bad at the meta, I don't think it would have been fun. But I think we're decent at the meta currently, so I think that's why we are having fun. Um, I wouldn't say it's fun, but it's more we're not not having fun currently. Um, you know, I think right now it's like I said before. I think the meta is still developing. There's a lot of switches, so that's another new thing. Another new thing that I want to ask you is, of, of course, the new game mode Flashpoint. We saw you guys on uh, Suravasa today. So, what's your thought on the new game mode Flashpoint? 자, 두 번째 질문은 또 이제 뭐 메타도 지금 현 상황에서는 계속 이렇게 좀더 어, 진행이 돼가는 지금 과정이고 그것뿐만 아니라 지금 이번 오버워치리그 다시 돌아오면서 좀 새로운 게임 모드가 들어왔죠. 이번에 플래시 포인트가 새롭게 이제 들어왔는데 지금 어, 이 새로운 게임 모드에 대해서 좀 어떤 의견이 있으신지 좀 어떻게 생각을 하시나요? 어, 일단 빨리빨리 이제 또 새로운 맵이다 보니까 이제 한판한판할 때마다 와, 이게 굉장히 에너지 소모가 너무 커가지고 힘들어요 이거 좀 맵이. 그럼 다시 한 번만 다시 말씀해 주실 수 있나요? 뭐가 힘들다고 하시죠? 이제 맵이 또 이제 스크림 때는 막 다섯 맵다 풀로 해서 막 너무 힘든데 그래서 또 에너지 소모가 좀 심한 것 같아요. Um, I think the new map right now is very fast paced. Um, the one thing that's very hard is because uh, whenever we scrim, we play the whole, every single part of the map, all five maps. So it is a bit taxing and you do need uh, a lot of endurance uh, to sort of go through that new map. All right, uh, that is it for the interview, Pelicans. Thank you so much. And again, big congratulations on the win. 다시 한번 승리 축하드리면서 보내드리도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. It's a Thank great you point. so much. Five map flashpoint, you yeah. gotta have endurance, right? I think we will eventually see some of those maps go down, and it's gonna be a real test for players. Like, can you hang in there? Because you don't get that round to round, like, all right, guys, 60 seconds, chill out, talk about strat from attack defense, right? We see long maps on Escort all the time, things like that. But to go just back to back to back fights the whole duration, I think that's it's an interesting skill to push players on um, and see who can sort of maintain at that level at the longest amount of time possible. I wonder what the longest time is to stay on Flashpoint. Like, if, have, if everything just goes like back and forth and like everything is contested I mean, back and forth, like 99, it's like 99. Because the overtimes are infinite, but. I guess. Oh. Now, can so you it's imagine gonna, if it's, it's like. On having those long overtime if it's very uh, back and forth on Flashpoint, then it's like mini five rounds of control non stop. So I do, I do also agree with Puck oh, yeah. that it could yeah, get that's very faster than right. control, though. It's worth knowing. Right. Like, you don't get. Each individual point is, is much faster than a full round of control in terms of how fast the, the point caps. Point caps. But yeah. you can push it. <laughs> yeah, like, crazy <laughs> OT styles. I mean, I do think we will potentially see, like, when we get more oh, yeah. closely matched teams, we will see these maps go to go to the fifth point. And I think we will be able to see, like, the full spectacle of the map. And, yeah, I think it's just an exciting 
like limit test because a lot of teams players you play with a lot of energy a lot of intensity and sustaining that especially when, once we get players on stage i, I think that's going to be really fun yeah i couldn't agree more Ooh, you heard that what you heard that what my <laughs> oh <laughs> oh something that's not so great that's coming up that's right i definitely heard it i think everyone oh, out there okay. uh bird is the word he's back he's on fire not the dumpster kind hopefully well, I'm just saying. No, no, right? go ahead, yeah. I hope I'm just, no, there's definitely not. Maybe. Yeah, no, probably, probably not. Probably not. Definitely not. Surely. Surely. Surely not. Definitely not. So let's go right? with definitely not. Okay. No, I think they're right. <laughs> they've been dominant as much as we want to be dramatic about it. They've already only dropped two matches. Uh, one against the Houston Outlaws, the other one against the Florida Mayhem, which are two of our other top teams. So, you know, nothing to be embarrassed about or like really question. Now we are in a new meta. The big question is, how does this meta impact uh, either of those teams? Washington Justice will go up against the Atlanta Reign, who, I mean, they're sitting comfortably, right? They already clinched their way into uh, the playoffs, so they don't have to play the play-ins, which means that really these upcoming matches, they can just take that to experiment, mm. lean back, kind of watch what the other players are doing. Still, though, I think if you're the Washington Justice in particular here, you want to be plucking a feather out of Atlanta Rain, putting it in your cap, and, and having that win because going into the plans, you want to be feeling really good. Yeah, well, uh, we definitely want to hear some more insight there. Usually we get to talk to the Atlanta Rain players. Uh, this time, however, uh, courtesy to the Atlanta Rain, we were provided with a video where Gator had to sit down to talk all things Atlanta Rain and strategies. Ooh.